Finally finished up my benchmarks on the EVGA RTX 3090 for the Win 3 Ultra graphics card. These names are definitely not getting any shorter, are they? Okay, so we are gonna discuss my opinions and I guess feedback on EVGA's version of the 3090. Uh, it is their For The Win 3 Ultra card. Uh, it does retail for $1,799.99. So $1,800. That is a lot of money. Uh, no question. I mean, it, it's quite a price trump even from the 2080 Ti's, which those seem to be rather extravagant. So we're starting to see uh, certain companies and EVGA is starting to get into this where they're just hyping or uh, they're upping the price a little bit because people are paying for it. So that's what's called supply and demand. And unfortunately it sucks for the consumer, but it is what it is. Is it worth that extra jump in cost from uh, some of the other 3000 series cards? Honestly, no. Uh, to me, I would probably say as a consumer, unless you just want the top end card or you want to be able to to SLI, which, or NVLink. I'm going to address that in a second because that is not as straightforward as one would think it, it should be. And it, it definitely should be more straightforward than it is now. Uh, but unless you want to specifically uh, NVLink a couple cards together, I would say a 3080, if you want, if you don't mind spending that kind of money, is the card to go with. It's just the performance gain that you get over the 3080 going to the 3090 for basically double the price, in my opinion, isn't worth it, no. Why did I get it? I'm gonna to touch on this first before we get into the slides here once again. I got it so that I could actually replace my two 2080 Ti's that I have in my Genesis system. My intention was to put them on water blocks and then NVLink them for an SLI. And I, while I realize the majority of games do not support SLI, I don't care. It's for me to be able to use in the games that do, and it's for me to be able to use for various other reasons such as streaming, capture, um, editing, assigning physics to that second card specifically. Uh, there are multiple reasons to actually be able to use uh, multiple GPUs in a system. Professionally, a lot of people do it. Um, that's why the Quadro series are set up the way that they are. It's interesting that NVIDIA is saying we don't want to support uh, SLI for gaming, yet they support it on a professional level. I get that it does create challenges for uh, potential drivers, but for the people that are willing to purchase it, we should be able to have it. Now, the 3090 is able to be SLI. That is a fact. However, EVGA and NVIDIA currently only offer a four-slot uh, NVLink bridge, which is, frankly, idiotic. I, I, I don't, I don't want to use the words that are strong enough to display how absolutely effing stupid I believe it is that they only offer a four slot considering that something like 90% of the consumer grade motherboards out there are three slot designs. And NVIDIA's argument when I chatted with them online was that, well, the card in its uh, standard format is a three slot card. Well, that's true. But you've got companies like EVGA who offer a hydro copper version, which is a single slot card. A lot of these aftermarkets, EK, um, Bits Power, uh, Fantex, I assume, uh, supposedly will at some point, uh, Water Cool with their Heat Killer Block, uh, Alpha Cool, so on and so forth. All of these companies are going to offer the water blocks for these cars, which will bring it down to probably a two slot, maybe even a one slot design, depending upon how they set up the, uh, the, the slot itself to go into the case. Uh, but let's assume it's a two slot. Well, that means that. There we go with having the same look as the 2080 Ti's or the previous 2000 series GPUs. And I could then use the uh, a three slot uh, NVLink bridge if it was available. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm absolutely befuddled by this. And on top of it, when I reached out to EVJ specifically, since they offer the 3090, they're offering the hydro copper uh, cards they're not offering the block apparently, but they're offering the cards. So that now makes them so that they are offering a product that supposedly supports SLI, but yet the people that will be purchasing those cannot use those in SLI or with NVLink because again, the majority of the boards out there, something like 90% are three slot designs. How effing idiotic is this? I mean, uh, it's so frustrating. Anyway, 
That is the one thing I'm the most frustrated with it with the 3000 series GPUs in general. But that is what it is. So going beyond that, uh, assuming you're going to use this card as a single card, because that's really the only way to use it right now, even though you've got the SLI, uh, you, can't, you can't use it. Um, assuming you can use it, this thing performs like a monster. You know, you're gonna see in synthetic benchmarks, it kicks some tail. I've even got uh, SLI benchmarks in there from the 2080 Ti, so you can see the comparison in that. I'm not gonna to touch on that too much today. I'll do that in a future video as an SLI comparison is the one why you might wanna do that, one why you might want not want to do that because of drivers. Uh, but it really does have an uptick in uh, games. Now, with regards to my, my uh, benchmarks that I ran, I am going to straight out tell you they're all in 1440 and 4K for benchmarking. Why? Because I don't know why you would buy this car for this card for gaming in 1080p. It would be a complete waste of money. You're just completely stopped by your CPU at that point. I, I mean, frankly, you need to be hit upside the head if you buy this for 1080p gaming, unless you're doing extremely high refresh rate, refresh rate competitive gaming. That'd be the only time and since that's the minority, I am not even touching on that. This card is meant for 1440p and for 4K gaming, and believe me, it does a heck of a job in that area. With that said, uh, I did use this on my uh, ASUS uh, PG27UQ 4K gaming monitor. Uh, this thing does go up to 144 hertz, so this matched with the uh, DisplayPort uh, cable, which is how I've got it hooked up, is a frankly a perfect match for 4K gaming. I did most of my uh, games in uh, ultra or high presets, very high, whatever the individual game was, in, in trying to see how they work. I did turn on DLSS whenever available, and the reason why is it's available and the average gamer is gonna go in and turn it on to get the most performance that they can, so why wouldn't you use that technology? I also uh, would be using RTX, frankly, because again, the technology is there. Some people don't like it, some people like it. I like the idea of it. It's not perfect, but it will become, I believe, perfected over time. At least that is my hope, uh, being that uh, NVIDIA is obviously putting a lot of time and effort and, frankly, money into this. Um, but with that said, let's dive into these benchmarks and let's come out with an opinion on the other side. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. This card is awesome. I mean, it is a tank and in 4K, which is how I play, I'm gonna show you here in just a second. Uh, this thing absolutely eats up the freight rates. It is awesome. Now, I wanna talk about why I set my benchmark up the way I did, or the, my test bench, not my benchmark. Hopefully they benchmark well on the test bench. I have it at the 4.9 from on the 9900K because my opinion is most people aren't gonna go out and buy the newest processor ever, every single time it comes out. That just isn't realistic. However, I do believe they will get a new GPU every two, three, four years, something like that. So upgrading from say a 2080 or a 2080 Super is realistic to let's say a 3080, for example, in this situation a 3090, that's what I'm using. But not necessarily changing your processor because that's gonna require a new motherboard potentially new RAM, just depending upon what um, version they're happen to be running. So I think 9900K is something that is very 
a common, and setting it at 4.9 gigahertz is a common overclock that even a standard non-enthusiast may go ahead and set their overclock at should they be able to do so. I mean, they'll probably just throw it in out of the box. I understand that and see how everything works. But regardless, that's how I set it up and why. Now, uh, going through the various items, the, obviously the synthetic benchmarks love the each uh, generation of card getting newer and it just completely destroys the previous generation. SLI for the 2080 was very interesting, or the 2080 Ti, because it really, you see the power of when SLI is supported, what it can do and, and how. And it is unbelievable. And that's, that's part of the reason why I think that there are still benefits to be had out of it, specifically with content creation, streaming, uh, capture, all that kind of stuff. Not necessarily gaming, but there are some games that will upscale up with that. And you kind of saw that in here. Um, the DLSS uh, test that is available from 3D Mark showed some interesting numbers. Also, you really can take advantage of having DLSS on in 4K and 1440p gaming. It just, that's the reality. And I believe most people are going to turn it on. I don't care if they think that, oh, this is a, um, a false technology. It's not the hardware. Well, no, it's, I mean, it's partially the hardware, but it is using drivers and software to increase the ability of, of having the hardware working. And the fact that it can use the DLSS is something that should be embraced in my opinion, because it does offer a direct and absolute import, uh, performance game. It just is what it is. So people are going to use that feature that are average gamers. And I, even those that are high end givers, I mean, I'm gonna use it because it's available and it works. So why wouldn't you? Uh, you going through here, you'll see how certain games, uh, Assassin's Creed, uh, specifically Valhalla, I wanna talk about that uh, title. It is a new title and it is very graphics intensive. And running that game on ultra settings is really what I wanted to try to do. I wanted to see, okay, what would this card be able to do compared to previous generation cards on the highest settings. I mean, that I, I haven't played around with Cyberpunk yet, just being honest, but Assassin's Creed Valhalla was absolutely just a crusher for these video cards. I mean, look at what it did for the 2080 Super, which is, that's a great card in 4K, 40 frames a second. Not horrible, I mean, it's playable, kinda, but it's not great. You get into the 2080 Ti in the mid 50s, low 50s, really good, you SLI, and it didn't really seem to have much of an effect, just a little bit. I mean, those are all extremely playable content or games on the highest settings in 1440. But then you get into Valhalla at the 4K on the 3090, and it absolutely crushed that game at 60 frames per second, 4K ultra settings plus. I mean, that that is what this newer card should be able to do. And I am just absolutely pleased with it because some of those games just were absolutely amazing looking with the better cards. Anyway, I wanna come back to why um, I've, been, I, I've gotten the EVGA ones. First off is av availability. So if you go to their website, they are the only ones with an, uh, the ability for you to set up a simple queue so that you can try to beat the bots. That's what the game is right now, beat the bots. With them, you go in, you click on auto notify, put an email address, and then when the air is, uh, it's your turn in the queue, they will email you. You have a certain timeline to be able to respond to that email and secure your spot. If you don't within that timeline, then it goes to the next person in line. Without having a pre-order system, that's basically what this is, that's as good as it gets. So that's the only way that I'm finding many people are actually able to get their hands on the 3000 series uh, GPUs at all is because they've actually thought through it and made it available to consumers as opposed to just retailers who are getting bought by bots, bot bots, by bots. Which, side note, if you people would stop buying from eBay and these scalpers that are using these bots, it would stop the problem. But every time you buy from them, you're just perpetuating the problem. So anyway, I'm, I've already touched on the past, and I gotta do so again. Their approach on this is what made it available so that I could get one on launch day, frankly. Um, well, let me back up. 
launch day was actually kind of a, a mess. I was able to get one because I just happened to get on and got lucky. The next month, I was able to get my second one because of the fact of how they had this system set up. And frankly, this is about as smart as it gets. EVGA did great with that. EVGA did not do great with the fact of this whole debacle with their NVLink. Because all you can do is buy, for the 3000 series, a four slot NVLink. EVGA, that's a fail. NVIDIA, that's a fail. I mean, this is completely idiotic. Okay, a couple things I wanna show you. One, uh, let's get into Precision X1. This is how you're gonna control your fans and your overclocking of the card. I like using EVGA software because it's an EVGA card and it works. I mean, it's simple, it doesn't, I mean, it's, Afterburner is awesome. I know a lot of people just go straight to that, but I just use usually the manufacturer software when appropriate. Um, to use this, what I found seemed to be the best settings for this card, and it's really strange, I went and I actually used their scan utility, and I went through and did a few different, well, multiple different passes to come up with it, what it thought was the best GPU and memory OC. After doing so, and then playing around with it several times in various different benchmarks, such as uh, Time Spy and Running Heaven and Running Valley and all these other ones, I settled on not cranking up the memory. I know it sounds crazy, but this has got some memory that seems to be self-correcting, right? And a clock of eight, uh, plus 89 on the core. I know most people are saying 15 megahertz in, uh, increments for whatever reason, this at 89 seemed to be like the, the sweet spot for me. Got the power cranked up to um, uh, 107%, so hopefully it'll, it'll pull that. And then obviously tied to the temperature. Uh, I've never reached the GPU temp of 91, just, if, I mean, like I said, I never really broke in the mid fifties, but, and then I've got it pulling for 100% of the GPU voltage. I do have the fan set on a custom curve because, let me do this, and the reason why is the clock stability is directly tied to temperature, tied to voltage, all of it. All of it just affects each other, right? So I am going to go ahead and get, um, have them benchmark running here. And then you can see up here, what my temperatures are doing. Uh, I'm gonna let it soak the card for a little bit and we will come right back. <clears throat> okay, um, I've had this running for a little while and I wanna kind of talk about a couple things. One, I do have a custom fan curve set. Um, temperature, and you can see here, and clock, and voltage are all tied together. As it draws more power, creates more heat. Creates more heat, fans need to kick up. So that's how I've got my curve set so I can continue to hold the higher uh, core clock. Now the clock does seem to wanna to jump around quite a bit. And I've actually got two cards. I wanna to touch on this for a second here. I have two cards. They both behave a little differently. The one that's in right now does not seem to be quite as much as the golden sample. I'm not saying I got a golden sample on the other one, that, but the other one seems to actually be a little bit better of a card. It holds its cores better. It doesn't seem to get quite as hot. And um, it just seems to perform better. I get my highest scores using that other card than I do with this. So when I, if I'm ever able to set up SLI, we don't know at this point, um, obviously that'll be my primary card, but you can't go above the clocks of your lower card. So that's important to remember that. So I've had this running for a while. Uh, temperatures have been bouncing between the 64 to 65 degrees in the high end. And that is, I've got the uh, core uh, voltage turned all the way up to 100%. I've got the power limit at 107%. So it's pulling the power, right? And this is just talking right now or showing how this is all behaving. This has been running for a while. So I would say it's pretty soft. Now I will say, with the fan curve, these fans are not quiet. Now, it's on an open test bench. You can probably hear them. And I'm, what, three feet away? 
four feet away, something like that, they are definitely not quite. In a, in a case, obviously it's gonna help a little bit, but to keep this card cool, these fans really gotta crank up now under the quiet setting or the default setting, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and switch that now. Um, let's exit out of this. On the default settings, the fans pretty much go to silent. However, I'm gonna point this out. Um, the clock will not come up and stay up as high. But that's just how the performance right, works, right? Because it needs to be cooler. And since the fans aren't gonna be under such an aggressive load, um, a, a, such an aggressive curve, it's just gonna go ahead and say, okay, well, this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a little bit. I mean, the, the core is pretty soaked. It, it, it is warm. It's not like it's got a chance to really cool down much. But it'll give you an example of what the difference in the noise is from the overclock setting that I have with an aggressive fan profile and stock. At stock, I mean, immediately it's a 56 degrees, 57, and the temperatures are not climbing horribly high, oops, uh, as one would think, because it's not pulling as much power. So it doesn't need to kick the fans up as high to stay cool. Does that make sense? Uh, or at least I hope it does. In my mind it does. Who knows today? Um, initially, on my first clocks, I'd get the core would bump up to about 2070. On my other card, it would stay there longer and bounce between that 2010, 2020 range to about 2070 with an aggressive fan profile. This one just does not want to go up there. This one wants to sit to the low to mid 1900s under on default and mid 1900s to low 2000s on the custom profile with an overclock. So that does show a little bit of a difference in how the cards function. Now let's, and this is obviously in a full 4K setup. So let's talk about um, what we can expect to get in game. So I want to uh, open up a couple of games here and I'm going to go to my go to here and I'll show you why in a second and see what the experience is like in a 4K game. Okay, I'm logged into basically what is my favorite game. Uh, this is what I play every week uh, with a group that I'm involved with. Uh, this is Star Wars The Old Republic. Now, <clears throat> some are going to say that's not graphics intensive. I'm going to say bull crap. <laughs> it is. It is hard on your CPU and it is hard on your GPU. So having this combined with a 9900K and a now 3090 allows me to play a 4K pretty much ultra settings. And you'll see it says custom preset. And the reason why is I have it on ultra and I have everything cranked up to the highest settings except for shadow map resolution. I, uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience, which I don't really like that software, but I do turn it on in order to see what it thinks the optimal settings are. This is what it says the optimal settings for this card is. Now you'll notice my refresh rate is capped at 120. And the reason why is the PG27UQ is a 120 Hertz monitor with the ability to overclock to 144. However, you lose the true 10 bit color. So I actually leave it in that because for what I'm doing, I don't need 144 hertz. It's I can't tell the difference between 120 and 144 anyway. Um, so that's how I've got this set up. And then topped at their top uh, or capped at the top frame rate that they allow of 200 frames a second. So we're gonna go ahead and go into um, uh, my main my main character. And the nice thing is you can see right off the bat uh, that my uh, clock does seem to want to jump up once I get into some graphic scenes here. You can see what it's drawing for power. You can see where the temperature is sitting, uh, what it's pulling for voltage and the whole bit. And I am going to close my chat because you don't really need that right now. Now, this is uh, an area called Odescent. Oh, yeah, I can't see in here, so let's change this. Okay, I can see my UI. Um, so you can right off the bat, you can see my power is drawing, you know, low 90s, upper 80s, that area. Area, GPU clock is sitting around 2040. It's pretty city. Uh, it's sitting pretty steady there. Temperature in the low to mid 60s. It'll be bouncing around in there. I can definitely hear the fans. Again, if this was in a case, it probably wouldn't bother me that much, especially if I had my headphones on for gaming. Um, 
And so you can see this is a, whoops, this is a pretty simple area. It's not, you know, amazingly uh, hard on your graphics, but I'm gonna go to a, an area that has a little bit more, um, I guess, graphic draw. And this is a pretty heavily area, uh, heavily populated area at most times because of its current content. And that being, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, we're going to an area called Onderon, okay? And I'm just gonna go out here real quick to where there's a bunch of trees and you can get an idea as to what gameplay at a 4K monitor looks like using uh, on ultra settings using uh, the 3090. So you can see right off the bat, frame rates really dropped. I mean, look at the scenery around. But at the same time, I mean, upper 60s, low 70s, mid, well, I jumped up for a moment there, is not horrible. I'm not going to complain about that. So, I mean, this, the scenery looks beautiful. It's not, you know, cyberpunk, but again, I haven't really played that yet. So, what I like is it feels very smooth. Um... There is definitely no lag. Uh, I don't feel like I've got any stuttering. I don't feel like there's any um, reason that I would have to say this is unplayable by any stretch. And this is completely capped out. Now, if I wanted to jump my frames per second, which this doesn't bother me, this is extremely playable, I would just bump down a couple of the settings from ultra to high or very high. And, you know, what kind of difference that would make? Eh. Probably not a lot, it might make some, but you can see this is, as far as gaming goes, extremely smooth. And this is my kind of game. So when, when someone says, okay, well, how, what do you think of this card? Or what do you think of that card or this setup? It's all subjective, right? I'm big into MMOs, specifically this one. Um, someone else might be more into, uh, you know, RPG games or first person shooters. Like some people might only play and like, I've been accused of this of Overwatch, which I do like. I'm playing just Fortnite, Overwatch, PUBG, and that's it. <clears throat> How hard is that on your GPU? Not very. So would you need to have this setup? No, but if you want to do it in 4K and enjoy it, I would say yes. Now this game is fantastically smooth with this card. I couldn't do this with the 2080 Super and, and have the same, same settings. I had to have everything at high or some sort of a medium high blend to be able to get the same frame rates. Benefit of 4K gaming on something like this. Now, if I drop this down to 1440p, I'd have low to mid 100s for my frames uh, per second at all times, which I still think your sweet spot for gaming right now is 1440. Higher refresh rates, good colors, um, it just seems to be the right blend right now. At some point, this will come up and, and be even more supportive yet of 4K and eventually 8K gaming, which who knows if and when that'll take, um, start taking over. Last couple of things I do wanna to touch on are more of the aesthetics of the card. As I mentioned before, the, the LED on this is very vibrant. Uh, it's got a very beautiful, colorful, and bright look should you choose to have the brightness turned up. And that's all controlled again in um, in Precision X1. And they added some color modes that they didn't have in the previous cards, which are really nice. Right now I've got it just set up on this color stack, but you go between that to a rainbow cycle, which is really nice. Uh, you've got other options as well. You've got your breathing and uh, a simple color cycles and how they kind of go through. And you can set different zones. Um, they just, I think that overall they've made a really pleasant looking, I guess, aesthetic. Other than, I don't understand the red strip at the end of the card. Card is beautiful other than that. I mean, so if you're leaving the cooler on, me, that would drive me freaking batty. Now, I am going to put a GPU block on it at some point. I have an Alpha Cool ordered. I have... Uh, an Optimus block ordered. I have EK block ordered. 
And the minute the uh, water cool heat clerk come out, I'll order that. I, I'm assuming right at this point that that's probably gonna be my primary block. Um, under the hope that I can actually SLI these if somehow there's a very three slot NV link that comes available for this. If not, I may use Optimus's block being that it is um, pretty intense looking, but they're, they're supposed to be crazy heavy and we'll see how that all turns out. I will have some uh, benchmarks once I get all of those. I'm gonna do some reviews on which uh, block seems to have the best performance and look and weight and all that kind of stuff, installation guides, all that. We'll have that coming up as well. So aesthetics wise, it looks fantastic. Audio, audible. On the standard curve, fans are silent, it's great. If you have an aggressive fan curve, they're extremely loud. It is what it is, That's your you pick your poison. How do you like the game? It doesn't bother me as much because I have my headphones on, typically. Um, but that's just, you know, that's how I go. Software, EVGA is X1 software. Uh, the Precision S1 is simple software and it works, usually. No need to play around with it. Um, Oh, I shouldn't say no need to. You should play around with it. There's no need to be concerned about it. Uh, the ability to update their BIOS and install custom BIOS on here from EVGA. Very simple. I've done it a couple times. I've actually played around well with the beta BIOS. Yeah, it cr increased the power draw to almost 500 watts, which was crazy. I have no need to, do, to use it. I'm not going to do any nutso overclocking with these. I don't believe I'm going to use these just purely, hopefully, for my main system. But again, we'll see. If they don't have the ability for me to NV link these, I probably won't put these in, in uh, Genesis yet. I'll just run with the 2080 Ti's as they work amazingly well for me. Uh, so if you have two 2080 Ti's and your hope is the SLI two 3090s, don't buy them until there's an NV link available because you'll be rather upset. Trust me, right. but we'll see what happens. Anyway, I know this was kind of rambling. Um, it was meant to have some fun. Talk about the 3090. Uh, you know, it's a straightforward card. What can you say? It's a lot of money. My suggestion, buy the 3080s. If you are going to get a new card and you don't mind spending, you know, $800, $2,000 somewhere, I think the 3090 is a waste of money unless they actually fix, and I, I say unless very carefully, they actually fix the NV8 link issue where there's, um, and come up with an NV link bridge for a three card slot or the price comes down. Very curious to see what happens with uh, AMD if they start getting some performance gains uh, out of the 6900 XT with some driver improvements. If so, curious to see if that brings the 3090 prices down. Um, I don't suspect it will, but still be very curious. And in the meantime, we'll just keep plugging forward. Anyway, hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up for me. If you didn't, you know what else to do. I hope it's not that. Please hit that subscribe button for me as it does help the channel and we will see you in the next one. So, Another level, another level, another level. We ain't never settle now. Nah. Level up, watch me level up, watch me level up, watch me level up. Another level.